I kind of feel like the Pope in St. Peter's Square the other day. <laughs> God is so good. All the time. God is good. You know, uh, I read about a, a, a farmer was talking to me. He said, a DEA officer stopped at our farm yesterday and said, I need to inspect your farm for illegal growing drugs. The farmer said, okay, but don't go in that field over there. The DEA officer verbally exploded saying, Mr. I have the authority of the federal government with me. Reached into his rear pants pocket, the arrogant officer removed his badge and shoved it in, my, in the farmer's face. He said, see this badge? This badge means I'm allowed to go anywhere I wish. On any land, no questions asked, answers given. I have, now have I made myself clear? The farmer nodded, uh, politely apologized and went about his chores. A short time later, he heard the screams, looked up and saw the DEA officer running for his life, being chased by the farmer's big old mean bull in the field. With every step, the bull was gaining ground on the officer, and the officer was clearly terrified. So the farmer threw down his tools, ran through the fence, and yelled at the top of his lungs, Show him your badge, officer, show him your badge. <laughs> All right, I'm used to at least three people laughing. <laughs> Yeah, I know, be careful. How many is practicing social distancing? Always have. Yeah, yeah, some of us always have, that's right. Yeah, but we're, gonna, we're going to, uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Let's get this right. This is technical difficulties, but we're going to be fine. Look at somebody beside you sitting on the couch and say, God is good all the time. Amen. All right, here we go. We're going to get her up here in a minute. There we go. God went to me the other day and we were shaking hands. We tried to shake hands and he said, oh, you're not shaking hands because of the coronavirus? I said, no, I'm not shaking hands because everyone's out of toilet paper. All right, got one laugh. All right. Keeping cool. How many of you have been keeping cool lately with all the stuff that's going on? Keeping cool in a hot environment. Now, I don't know about you, but everywhere you look, everywhere you see, you know, is coronavirus, coronavirus. And, and well enough, there's been 10,000 deaths in, in Rome and, or in Italy, and uh, even the Vatican has uh, got uh, some people, are some of the priests are testing positive. There's some churches, the whole congregation is testing positive. There's church, uh, preachers testing positive. So, so uh, the best thing to do is follow the CDC guidelines, and that is practice social distancing. And I'm so glad that God doesn't have to practice that. He's there with us all the time, no matter what. He's there as close as the mention of His name. So let's talk about keeping cool in a hot environment. Uh, uh, escape zone. I see people everywhere trying to escape. They're getting kind of wore out, staying at their house, getting kind of wore out, uh, uh, trying to avoid the virus. People are wearing masks. And let me tell you this, if you're not sick, you don't have to wear a mask. You wear a mask when you're sick to keep from blowing stuff on everybody else. And if you want to wear a mask, I'm still not going to stop you. You do what you feel led. Uh, don't be criticizing people by the way they handle this because everybody handles it different. Okay, but here's the escape zone. You're trying to escape, but no matter what you do, everywhere you go, every channel you turn on, everything you look, everywhere you look, there's uh, COVID-19. COVID-19, the coronavirus-19. And so I'm going to talk to you for just a little while. Part one, this is part one. We'll finish it up next week. You know, watch the news. The news is saturated with it. There's true news. There's untrue news. There's fair news, there's unfair news, and there's exaggerated news, and then there's the social media. There's people on the social media telling you to drink certain things and you'll be better off and do this and that and you'll be better off. Follow the CDC guidelines. They are the brains. Listen to them. They're going to tell us how to keep ourselves safe. And again, social distancing doesn't mean that you cannot talk to anybody. When I think about social distancing, I think about when I'm at Pitt Detention Center, there's a whole lot of social distancing going on in D-Block. The people are definitely six foot from each other, but they still communicate, they still have a good time, they still holler back and forth to one another. Remember, 
This is a good time to get with your family, to have a good uh, uh, chance to enjoy them. Okay? While other distractions are out of the way. So now, here's the thing I live by all the time. This is the model I live by. I've lived by, by it for many, many years. I live, about, live this way now. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. One more time. Once I learned this and started practicing it, it changed and revolutionized my life. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. In any situation, remember, again, i got to say it one more time. Life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond. Watching all around, the fear levels are at an all-time high, and it's evidenced not by the pandemic, but it's evidenced by the pandemonium. And, and I sit back and I think about it, all these voices. I was, I mean, I, no matter where I go, I hear people say, back up. Uh, 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 I was in a store the other day trying to get the necessary stuff, and somebody come around the corner and saw me there, and all of a sudden they ran away until I moved and they got back and I said, man, these people are really on edge. And so I went to a great philosopher, as we're thinking, as we're talking, there's a great philosopher that showed us how to keep it cool when all these voices, when all these noises are all around you, when you can't think because of all these things that are happening around you. This great philosopher I grew up with, matter of fact, uh, he was on, I think it was every Tuesday night, then I think they moved to Thursday night. But that great philosopher is Fonzie. <laughs> How many remember Fonzie? For all of those that don't remember Fonzie, you're missing something. Okay? Fonzie shows us how to handle all the noises that are trying to drown you out and keep you from having peace. Watch this. What you gonna do when it comes for you? Bad news. 
Okay. <laughs> now I get laughs. I couldn't get laughs when I was telling jokes, but I was singing, I get, I get laughs. Here we go. What do we do when I brought us bad news? What I have discovered is when anxiety has taken hold of you, when you find yourself at this brink where you're staying confused, at this brink where, where you just stay disoriented, this negative self-talk is just going on and on and on in your head, you can't concentrate, or you're just going blank then, and making careless mistakes, it's at this point that you begin to feel powerless. And so now anxiety is high, all this going around about coronavirus, I watch the news, I watch Fox News, and then I watch uh, Channel 9 News, I watch Channel 7 News, and they all had some different takes on it, but as I was watching the news, and then when I heard that 10,000 people had died in Italy, and I heard over 1,000 people had died in the United States, and, and all this stuff going on, every time they would give a new statistic and how 200 people died here today, and blah, 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 my heart would jump, and I'd find my mind start racing. And so I'd have to do like Fonzie and go, cool it! God's got this! Who am I trusting? Man or God? I respect the disease, but I'm not giving it to the fear because I fear God more. So when you feel empowered, let me just tell you something. If you feel empowered today, you don't have to feel this way. Matter of fact, if you're watching this, I want you to feel some relief right now. It's time to take back your power. If you felt your power away, you, you, you're walking around in the days, you don't know what's going on, you, you just tore all the pieces because of what's going on around you, take back your power. Now watch this. This is how you take back your power. When you take responsibility for your thoughts, when you take responsibility for your feelings and your behaviors, you get your power back. You become strong again. You're not trying to figure out what's going to happen next because you know what? I already know what I'm going to do. And up to when I get home, I'm going to have me a nice meal. I'm going to sit back. I might watch a John Wayne movie. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to study His Word a little bit. Then I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and get some exercise. I'm going to speak to people. I'm not going to get up in a little hole, cover up my head and go, what we're going to do, what we're going to do, bad news, bad news, what we're going to do, what we're going to do when it comes to you. So watch this. Here, here, here you go. How, how do you take responsibility for your thoughts? I'm glad you asked that. Here it goes. Number one. Very first thing you got to do. We're going to go over four things right now. Number one is slow down. In five minutes, there was so much news, my mind could not comprehend it. While I was watching the news, I was also reading some CDC guidelines. I was also watching some other things about the virus. And so there was everywhere, there was stuff hitting all at one time, and my mind was racing. Remember, cool it! Slow down. Psalm 46 and 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. I will be exalted over the coronavirus. So, watch this. you got to slow down. Don't react immediately. Don't get that knee jerk going on and all of a sudden you're ready. That's why, that's why there's no toilet paper. Who in the world thought that when you went to Walmart now they had to ration you toilet paper? Who thought you'd go to Walmart and they would have to ration you some of the things that normally you can't give away? Because people are not acting, they're reacting. Stop reacting, start acting, so don't react immediately. Be patient. Collect as much information as possible. Get it from a reliable source. Don't look down on the Facebook page and see whichever one got the most likes by my neighbor over here and by my friend over there. He got the most likes. So that's what I'm No. Go by the CDC guidelines. Respect it. Do what they say. That's why we have an empty church today. We put out a, a thing. We've got the praise team is here, but we put out, uh, we would rather everybody watch this from home. We respect the CDC guidelines. Plus, I don't want the, I don't want the virus. Do you want it? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want it. Okay, 
I'm not afraid of it, but I definitely don't want it. And now, ask yourself, this is hard. Ask yourself, is this really going to matter a year from now? The way I'm feeling right now. My jumpiness right now. Your jumpiness, your powerlessness. Is that really going to matter a year from now? Well, now they're telling us that it's going to bounce back next year and maybe bounce back in a different way. And so it's going to be something that bounces every year. If you heard that, that's from the CDC. That's not from the, 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 the latest uh, poll on Facebook. Why do you think? No, this is CDC. That because it's forming again in Africa and it's going to move up, it's going to be a cycle year by year, but we're catching it now. So next time it comes around, we shouldn't have to do what we're doing right now. So, so again, ask yourself, is it really going to matter here from now? Well, some of this stuff is. Some of it's not. So, here's the question. If you answer no to something, then just file it back in the back of your head somewhere. Just file it back. Matter of fact, you can even throw it in your trash can. But if you answered yes to anything, it is going to matter a year from now, then here's what you do. You step back to remove yourself from the situation. Whenever I find myself in a situation where my, where, where my emotions are getting out of hand, whenever I find myself where I'm getting ready to lose my Fonzie cool, whenever I find myself in a situation that I know I cannot do a thing about it, what I do is I remove myself from the situation, and in my mind, I make myself a bystander looking in. Think about it. I remove myself from the situation, I make myself a bystander looking in, and as I make myself a bystander looking in, then I start thinking, how is this person reacting, and how is this person reacting, and is this the right way? And now when I pull away, I disconnect my emotions, and I just, just the facts, man, just the facts. And when this happens, this perspective helps us remain less emotional, and it improves your ability to make decisions. So number one, slow down. Number two, stay positive. It says, while well, certain things are true, noble, praiseworthy, admirable, right, pure, lovely, Philippians 4 and 8, think on these things. So now, let me show you something now. You say how I got the, the stuff bouncing in. That's how somebody is when they're not staying positive. They're bouncing all over the place. When a stressful situation occurs, your mind begins to wander because now you got stress hormones going out. And then you got four or five different stress hormones, and they're causing you to get in attack mode and causing you to get into offense, defense mode and causing you to get into the fight, flight, or freeze mode. And so now your thinking's all jumbled up and you're trying to figure this thing out. So, so your mind wanders, your thoughts may be negative, and it's difficult for you to remain calm. So here's what you got to do. Turn yourself back to the Word of God. Remember the breathing exercise. Breathe in. You breathe in and hold your breath. Count to five. Through your nose. Hold it. Count to five again. Then release it through your mouth and count to five and just keep on going. I promise you, you may have to do it a couple of times, but it will cause you to lose some of that stressful energy and it helps you to put the energy where it belongs and that's in positive thinking. So now I've done that and now I'm talking to God, I'm listening to God and I'm reading His words. So, so, once you do that, you let go of negative thoughts. You refocus your mind on something that is positive. No matter how small. Something that is positive. You know, you may have a tremendous house to clean. And you're thinking, oh no, you get negative because you got five rooms you got to clean and it seems like you're never going to get all these clean. You ain't got enough energy to do even one room. Instead of focusing on all of that and getting overwhelmed, well, suppose you just went in a corner and swept up some stuff and, and you threw it away and you rearranged some things just a little bit. Focus on that positive, not the negative. Hey, my wife and I did that yesterday in certain situations where we were trying to help out with certain things we could not do. But what we did do, we thought about the positive and, and it made things a whole lot better. So, so stay positive. Here's a hard one. The Bible says, cast all your anxiety. The word cares means anxiety. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Never ask, what if? What if? 
What if? What if? I didn't say prepare for the bad times. I've got stuff. I've got food. Not like some kind of chipmunk stored away. I'm talking about a reality. I do have some food set on light cycle. I told everybody, keep about 14 days worth of food just in case everybody's asked to stay in their house or if you happen to get the virus and you can't leave. 14 days worth of food and water. Got it. Check it. Okay? Uh, uh, 10 years worth? No. no. I got what I need. But, again, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? You know, the, the worst question you can ask in the middle of a crisis begins with, what if? I'm not talking about why you're trying to plan things out. Yes, you need to plan things out. It's not wrong to say, what if all the grocery stores shut down and I need to make sure I've got my stuff here. I'm not talking about that. What if we have to be put in for 14 days and have 14 days worth of food? We're not talking about that. It's just that, what if, 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 what if. It induces panic. And it forces you to process situations that have not even occurred and may never happen. It'll make you run down to Walmart, get a great big old shopping cart, and buy two years worth of toilet paper. Crazy. Crazy. What if questions compound the fear and escalate the problem? Not only that, but if all you ever talk about is what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, it leads to more anxiety. And you can never calm down. And then the, the final one for today is take care of yourself. Take care of your body. You see, a lot of times the Bible says in, in 3 John 1 and 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may be enjoy good health and that all may go good with you even as your soul is getting along well. In other words, I want you spiritually to get with it, but also want you physically to be matching you spiritually. Do what you got to do. You know, it's amazing if you don't get enough sleep, if you don't get enough to eat, you make some bad decisions. It's bad. You see, if you, take, if, if you make your personal health a priority, you'd be better equipped to handle a crisis. I remember my wife and I... Uh, we're going up to New England, and we took three flights on the way up, two flights on the way back, and, and I remember on those flights, the very first thing the, the stewardess did was she got up, and she showed us about the oxygen, and she dropped a little oxygen mask down, and she would say, if this falls down, put yours on first, because you can't help anybody else if you haven't got oxygen yourself. The same way, Get some sleep. Not only get some sleep, make sure you hydrate, drink plenty of water. Matter of fact, well, however much water you drink now, go ahead and add a few more uh, uh, glasses to that. And if all you're drinking is Coca Cola, all you're drinking is coffee, you got a problem. Drink some water. Drink plenty of water. So, no problem drinking coffee and tea. I drink coffee every day, uh, drink tea off and on. But drink plenty of water. Keep yourself hydrated. Eat some healthy food. If you're going to sit back and drink Pepsi Colas all day and eat honey buns, then don't be surprised if you're not laying back in the diabetic coma somewhere and can't help anybody. Make sure you take care of yourself. Eat a balanced diet. Exercise regularly. You know, my wife and I walked through the neighborhood uh, a couple of nights ago. The thought was great. It was the first time we walked all the way around the neighborhood. As a matter of fact, some of the neighbors thought that we were they were looking around for some places to, to, to vandalize because they'd never seen us before. <laughs> Just joking. They were walking that way before. And so we walked all around the neighborhood, walked all the way back. And hopefully tonight we're going to walk all the way. I caught the horseshoe. We're going to walk all the way around the neighborhood, all the way there and all the way back. Get some regular exercise. Get plenty of sleep. Exercise lowers the level of stress hormones. It helps the body at its highest level. Remember, once the stress hormones kick in, all of a sudden now you've got the what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if going on. Uh, uh, you look kind of like Barney Fife. Anybody ever seen an Andy Griffith show and seen Barney Fife and he's getting all upset? And he, that's what's going on. And, 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 and you go, oh, oh, oh. calm down. Just calm down. Do your breathing exercises. You know, it's amazing how God works because we went through mindfulness therapy training 
here over about eight weeks before all this happens. So now uh, our people's been trained in mindfulness, cognitive behavioral therapy, how to calm down when things are getting out of control. Now, uh, by improving your health, you will increase your self-control, you'll increase your memory, you'll increase your emotional intelligence. Now, ET, emotional intelligence. What in the world is emotional intelligence? All right, you know, everybody knows what, uh, 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 you're, you, when you try to do it, uh, you're, you're uh, 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 trying to check your intelligence. Let's just go with, what's this? Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is you being able First, to recognize your emotions. Let me ask a question. I can't see any hands out there because y'all are all behind the screen. Pay no attention to the people behind the screen. But I'm asking this question. You can raise your hand because nobody can see you. How many can truly recognize your emotions? I can't. It takes a lot of training. First part of emotional intelligence is you have to be able to identify your emotions. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. Whatever it is, I have to understand that I have emotions and I understand what those emotions are. Number two, not only is emotional intelligence being able to understand what emotions you were feeling at the time, it also has to do with you being able to control yourself with those emotions going on. I'm angry. I'm sad. But do I let it shut me down? I'm angry. Do I let it cause me to get up and do something crazy like hit the person in front of me, knock down something all around me, whatever. By emotional intelligence, I recognize I'm angry. And number two is now I'm controlling it. I'm not going to let it get out of hand. I'm going to breathe. I'm sad when I do a funeral. Many times I'm so sad when I'm doing a funeral. But I recognize the sadness. And now I ask God to help me to keep the sadness under control so that I can do the funeral. I call it getting in God's pocket. I come into situations sometimes where things have gone crazy, especially uh, uh, at a prison situation or as a chaplain at a hospital. I've gone and had to break up fights. I saw grown and all kinds of things. And when I walked in, I recognized first, part one, I was getting anxious. Number two, I recognized my anxiousness could not get the best of me, so I got it. And here's the third part of emotional intelligence. I recognize the emotions of somebody else and I help them control it. Wow. I do it every time that I go, or every, not every time, excuse me, I do that many times when I go to the uh, prison. I do that many times when I'm a chaplain, uh, being called in on a death scene of code blue. I recognize emotions and I'm there to kind of help keep them at bay. And usually what I do is when, when I'm called in, of course, I haven't been an on-call chaplain in quite a few years, but when I was an on-call chaplain at Pittmore Hospital, uh, I can remember one night when I was on from 8 to 8, I remember there was 8 deaths that night, and I ministered to 57 people. All in that 12-hour shift. I saw a bunch of emotions. And I had to recognize and then help keep them corralled. It's called emotional intelligence. Have you got it? If you don't, ask God to help you. Here it is. I know I'm going to ride this horse to death. Recognize your own emotions. Number two, be able to, to corral your emotions. Number three, recognize other people's emotions and help them to corral it. That's full-fledged emotional intelligence. You're actually getting something done, and you can really minister for God that way. So some, these are important characteristics that will help you to respond well in any emergency. Now, sometimes, uh, I just realized, sometimes you just have to bow your head, say a prayer like this coronavirus, 
bow your head, say a prayer, and weather the storm. And be thankful that God's got this. I'm going to call the musicians up. Before I do, I want to say something. Number one, before I pray, and the musicians as they start coming up, next week, we normally have communion on first Sunday, and so next week we're still going to have communion, but you're going to have mobile. What I mean by mobile is next week, I want you to get some kind of bread. It doesn't have to be the fancy bread that you get from the Bible bookstore. You know, just any kind of bread. Get you some bread. If you don't have bread, get you some crackers. Whatever. Just get you something. Because God understands this. He's not going to say, well, they didn't have bread from uh, the Christian bookstore, so they get an X on that. No. Get you a cracker. Get you bread. Get you a cookie. Get something. And then try to have some grape juice. If you don't have grape juice, just grab something. Again, God understands. He knows. And He's more concerned with your heart than anything. And so, we're going to have communion next week also. And we're going to do a bubble. It's going to be fine. Get what you can. Crackers, cookie, bread, something. And get some, if you got grape juice, get it. If you don't, get some kind of juice. If you don't have juice, get water. God understands. Now, I'm going to pray. Father, we know, Lord, that the world's in a tight spot, so to speak. There's some bad stuff going on. There's a lot of people that died. I thank God that although our nation right now may have the most cases, it's because look how much bigger than we are than Italy. But Italy having the most death, 10,000. God, help us keep things in perspective. Not be emotion driven. Have some emotional intelligence. Have some spiritual intelligence to recognize your word and to recognize how to apply it to our life and then help others to recognize his word and apply it to their life. Spiritual intelligence. Lord, this is your day. This didn't take you by surprise. Yes, it took all of us by surprise. The whole world is shutting down. to try to keep this stuff corralled. You already knew this. You've already prepared all you got to say is peace. Be still. And it'll leave. Although it's not leaving right now, Lord, I do ask you to speak peace be still to the people that are watching this today. Peace. Be still. Help us, God, to breathe. Help us, God, to, to slow down. Help us to be thankful, to take care of ourselves, to stay positive, and to know that you've got this. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it all. Amen. The mighty army this morning, let me get it because I want to make sure I give it to you right. If you get mighty army, you got this this morning. Here's this morning's mighty army. Mighty army, if a tiny virus can do this much damage, talk about Corona. Mighty army, if a tiny virus can do this much damage, imagine what mustard seed faith can do. Wow. Wow. I want you to look at somebody in your house. If there's nobody in your house, I just want you to look up and I want you to say this. God's got this. God's got this. 
God's got this. God's got this. And then say, either way, we win. Either way, we win. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. We're going to be here again next week, and we're just going to keep doing Facebook Live, period. But we're also going to do the social distancing until they tell us not to do it anymore. Thank you. God bless you. Pay attention to what you're doing. Follow the correct information and know God's got this. I'm glad to see you. I was expecting to see you this morning. <laughs> Look.